Welcome back. Was that cool? Thank you for joining me. Today we've got this, uh, this video, this excellent video. German universities studying in Germany from finance to fraternities. <gasps> Meet the Germans. So I'm just curious, as an American, I'm very curious to know how our education system differs from the rest of the world, the higher education system. Well, the whole education system. I'll have to look up, I'll have to do a video about like primary school some other time. But for today, we're doing universities. So let's get to it. I found this video. Let's see. Hopefully this informs me. Welcome to your crash course in studying in Germany. Please mm -hmm. turn to page 15 in your textbook. Oh, the basics. I forgot my textbook. Hochschule literally means high school, but it's not like the American. Huh. High school. The basics. Hochschule, li Hochschule literally means and page 15 in Sorry, your guys. textbook. Let me get this. The basics. Hochschule, li Hochschule. literally means Got high it. school, but it's not like the American high school. In Germany, it's the umbrella term for higher education institutions, hmm. which includes the more professionally focused Fachhochschulen and the more I'm not going to bother with that one. Fachhochschulen. More academically focused Universitäten. The first Universitäten. university to open its doors for teaching was the University of Heidelberg back in 1386. 1386, dude. Colleges and universities That's a long time all ago. over Germany. Back in 1386. And today, there are colleges and universities all over Germany. Next chapter. They look very beautiful and very um like um historic. Like we have some colleges here that have that vibe a little bit, like Yale, but And today there are colleges and universities all over Germany. I mean some of those are look more modern, some look more historic. Like that looks like Harvard. Next chapter. Applying to university. Some courses follow the numerous clauses system, where the number of people admitted is limited. Successful applicants will have to achieve a minimum final grade in high school and sometimes sit entrance exams. For hmm, okay, so, uh, so uh, somewhat sort of similar to the United States. There's not usually an entrance exam. That's unusual, but... And it's not like you need a set score. I mean, we do have the SATs, which is like your kind of general standardized test at the end of the high school that you take and and there's no set score for what you need but um applicants will have to get to into a minimum any given college minimum final grade in high school and sometimes sit entrance exams for zulassungsfreier studiengänger i'm really not trying that one or free admission courses sorry anyone i'm not even trying to make i'm not like that i'm not making a joke I'm just, I just legit can't say that. Who meets the basic requirement for zulassungsfreier Studiengänger or free admission courses? Anyone who meets the basic requirements should get a place. Okay, so that's more similar to like a community college type of deal, which are like the cheaper colleges that are. Um, they're not private. They are um, funded by the government, but of course you still have to pay. But they are cheaper. Of course, this means they might have to put up with overcrowded lecture halls. Hmm. Popular courses among female students in Germany include business, law, and psychology. And among male students, business, mechanical engineering, and computer science. There has been a push over the last decade to get more women into the so-called MINT subjects. <laughs> MINT. That's maths, computer science, natural sciences, and engineering. Hmm. Yeah, we have the same thing. It's just called STEM here. Uh... Science, technology, engineering, and math. So, and same exact thing, I think. Subjects. That's maths, computer science, natural science. Well, not computer science specifically here. I'm just trying to see if it's... Sciences and engineering. So the only difference would be it's science, not computer science. But I like that. Computer science is pretty freaking important. And female admissions to those courses have doubled in that time. Some courses, okay. like medicine and teaching, include state exams. These are held by the state rather than the uni and are there to ensure oh. high standards where it's particularly in the public interest. Oh, and finally, good. page 32, the university system. German universities used to follow the diploma system, but back in 1990... I do have to say, I'm just thinking about that, but that makes a lot of sense, that the state would only have exams for the... for the like when, it's, when it concerns public health, like you need a doctor to meet a certain um, requirement a certain threshold by a state level. You know, they don't care so much if the, um, um, the freaking dude running the movie theater meets a certain threshold. Like, his business can fail. That's no problem. But if you have a hospital failing because it's like a lot of people are 
dying and stuff, that would be better. The university system. German universities use interest. And finally, page 32, the university system. German universities used to follow the diploma system, but back in 1999, the Bologna process kickstarted. started Bologna? These used to follow the diploma system, but back in 1999, the Bologna process kick-started a move across Europe to standardise higher education. Since then, most German universities have switched over to the bachelor master system. A whopping 90% of bachelor students at academic universities go on to do a master's. 90%? I would bet it's the exact opposite. I bet 90% don't here. Maybe 80. Maybe like... No, what I mean by 80 is 80% 80 don't here. Maybe 20% of students go on for a master's. That might in part be explained by the next point. Probably oh. the best thing about studying in Germany, the cost. Studying at a private university could set you back tens of thousands of euros, okay. but most universities are state run and have zero tuition fees. Wow. The tens of thousands, that's comparable to here. Although it could be hundreds of thousands by the time you're done with it. But that, that would really be only at an elite school. Students here only have to pay the Semesterbeitrag, an admin fee of about 100 to 350 euros per semester. Oh my gosh, What's that's more, awesome. parents continue to receive child benefit payments for their kids who are in full-time education. What is a child benefit payment? I don't even know what that is. Up until the age of 25. And the perks don't end there. Being a student in Germany will get you all sorts of discounts in cafes and restaurants, on phone contracts and travel. In fact, travel within the... There are a lot of, I don't know if it's more standardized in Germany, it kind of sounds like it is, but here, a lot of mm, re businesses located around a university will give you a discount if you have a university card. Region is usually completely free, and for that reason, many people sign up for any old course at uni with hmm. no intention of turning up, just for the freebies. <laughs> You also might hear people... You've always got those kind of people, huh? No, no matter where you go. <laughs> just for the freebies. You also <laughs> might hear people talking about getting barfuck. And I might be one of those people. Took me a long what is a barfuck? Long time to work out what they were saying. It turns out it's an acronym, short for Bundesausbildungsförderungsgesetz. Well, it's no freaking wonder they just say barfuck. That's the law governing grants and loans for students. It's means assessed and around a fifth of German students receive it. Of course, students still have to do I need to go back. I'm still like, I can't believe that word. Ausbildungsförderungsgesetz. That's the law governing grants and loans for students. Okay. It's means assessed and around a fifth of German students receive it. Hmm. Of course, students still have to pay for rent, books and food. Around a quarter of students in Germany live with their parents or relatives, and around a quarter live in their own flat. 30% live in okay. a VG, which stands for Wohngemeinschaft, literally living community, which is a shared apartment. Most so is that like a dorm? A dormitory? Unis also offer spaces in Vornheim or halls of no, that would be a dorm. residence with small private rooms and shared cooking facilities. These are usually the hmm. most economic options, but you have shared cooking. That's interesting. They don't have shared cooking here. The students aren't cooking very often. I mean, maybe in like the microwave, but they have shared bathrooms. Have to apply early to get a spot. Germany is a popular destination for international students based on cost, reputation, and an increasing number of courses offered in English. In oh, most cases, cool. foreign students study for free here too. German universities what? have a good <laughs> for free even if you're foreign. What? Here in the states, even if you go to a different state, the tuition doubles. So if you're from Indiana, you go to a different state. If I go to California, the tuition usually doubles reputation and yet they don't tend to appear at the very top but i could go to germany for free <laughs> yeah too german universities have a good reputation and yet they don't tend to appear at the very top of international university rankings this could be down to money a focus on educating the many not the few and the fact that a lot of research in germany is carried out in dedicated research institutes even That's if these it. institutes are affiliated with the university hmm. the research is often counted separately i see so how important is a degree in germany Interestingly, almost 20% of the current members of parliament in Germany don't have a degree. But in I bet it's higher here. In certain professions, it's obligatory, and in many others, it's preferred and will lead to a higher income on average. Exact same kind of thing here. Of course, there's more to student life than studying. Also, es gibt immer Partys von den unterschiedlichen Fachschaften und den unterschiedlichen Studiengängen und ich glaube, das Leben als Studierender in Deutschland ist auch so ein bisschen aufs, aufs Feiern ausgelegt und natürlich 
während Corona kommt das leider zu kurz. Also Uni ist natürlich in allererster Reihe ein Ort, wo man andere Menschen trifft. First and foremost to meet other people, wow. Gute Freundschaften schließt, wo man das erste Mal Leute trifft, die auch total ähnliche Interessen wie man selbst habe. Und an der Uni kann man sich dann nochmal ganz neu, sozusagen wenn man erwachsen ist, aussuchen, mit wem möchte ich überhaupt meine Zeit verbringen, mit wem möchte ich meinen Kaffee trinken, so nach der Vorlesung. Es gibt diverse Freizeitangebote, also studentische Hochschulgruppen, ähm, Kunst, Musik, Lesekreise, man kann sich auch politisch engagieren. Hast du vielleicht ein paar Tipps für Jungs? It's similar to here in the States. Um, it definitely depends on the type of uh, college you're going to. If you're going to one of the community colleges, there's really not a lot to do outside the classroom. There's typically not much to do. Junge Leute, die gerade über ein Studium But if you're going to like a nice um, private university or a big state college or something, then there's a lot to do. Man kann sich auch politisch engagieren. Hast du vielleicht ein paar Tipps für junge Leute, die gerade über ein Studium nachdenken? Die Aufregung, die man, die man so hat, ist total okay und äh, I'd be man so kann nervous. vergessen, es ist für alle neu. Du musst dir Zeit nehmen, das zu finden, wofür du wirklich eine Passion hast, was dich interessiert, womit du dich stundenlang beschäftigen, tagelang, monatelang, jahrelang. <lacht> Nicht irgendwas nur studiert, weil keine Ahnung, da gibt es gute Jobchancen oder das hat auch schon irgendwer in meiner Familie gemacht. Wenn es der Geld I do have to say I agree with that tip, but also the opposite too. There's a lot of kids out there who go to university here for like years and get into a huge amount of debt. And then there's no jobs in their field because they chose some like random thing. So, I mean, I guess if you're not having to pay, like going to, if you're not having to go into debt, then I guess it's not as important to find something that's gonna make you a lot of money to pay off that debt. I don't know. Geldbeutel und Jobchancen oder das hat auch schon irgendwer in meiner Familie gemacht. Wenn es der Geldbeutel und die Eltern zulassen, würde ich mich nicht so stressen, was was das Studium angeht, sondern die Zeit nutzen. Wenn man viel draus macht, dann kann das eines der besten ja, Lebensabschnitte in einem Leben werden. One quite curious aspect of university life in Germany are the Verbindungen or student fraternities. Hmm. These societies own property fun. where members can apply to live for very low rent. They organize events and lectures. That's the opposite here. At a fraternity here, you can apply to pay extra. <laughs> You're having to pay like a lot more in fees to the fraternity. Societies own property where members can apply to live for very low rent. They organize <laughs> events and lectures and some uphold traditions such as fencing. Oh, that's awesome. Members are seen as members for life, contributing socially and financially to the societies long after graduation. Same here. The groups were traditionally men only, elitist and very conservative. Mm. From around the 12th century, students across Europe joined together for protection and community. In Germany, students from particular regions formed groups called Landsmannschaften, often distinguished by particular colored clothes. Why do the words have to be so long? Students from particular regions formed groups called Landsmannschaften, often distinguished by particular colored clothing. These days, it's estimated that less than 2% of students are part of a Verbindung. There are groups that remain strongly mm. conservative, with some even plagued by right-wing extremism. Oh. But there are also women's and mixed societies, and many, but not all, fraternities have ditched their <laughs> dueling rituals. Thank oh, that's a shame. Thanks to the many of you who requested and inspired this topic. That's awesome. Very interesting. So in a lot of ways, it sounds like similar to American, but without, without needing to go into a bunch of debt which is um, a plus and a little bit more of a systematic way of like knowing if you're eligible to go into the college or what college you can get into and stuff. Whereas here, it's just like, you've just got to pay to apply to a bunch of different places and hope for the best. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's very interesting. Uh, that was a great video. Thank you. D W Euromax. <laughs> uh, and thank you for watching mainly. And if you want to subscribe, well, this is a German-only channel, guys. Just so you know, I only react to German stuff here. So if you want to subscribe, if you like German content. Um, but either way, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. <gasps>